Have you ever wondered whether there's a link between obesity and low testosterone? We're going to discuss this next, so keep watching. Hi, welcome back to the Balance My Hormones video. It's 2021 now. Um, we're all locked down. Uh, we're here with Dr. Tuliatos. Um, hi, hi, Dr. T. Um, we're going to discuss today um, obesity and testosterone. Is there a link? What's the relationship? Hi, doc. Hi, Dr. T. So, hello. How are you? Yeah, you too. Um, so, obesity. Um, I know it's a chicken and egg scenario. Um, some might say. But uh, can low testosterone cause obesity? Does obesity cause low testosterone? Or what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's both of them. And absolutely, low testosterone can lead to obesity. <laughs> because uh, people with low testosterone have uh, lower energy and are not capable of building lean body mass and muscle tissue that increases, of course, basal metabolic rate. And the other thing is, is that obesity can lead to elevated estrogens out of visceral or mental fat that are a negative feedback for the hypothalamus and GnRH release that will stimulate the late testosterone. finally. So it, it both can happen, you know? And of course, obesity can lead to afterwards to metabolic syndrome and diabetes type two. Okay. So George, I had a question. We've, I've come across patients who have been told by an endocrinologist because that's in the UK what happens you, you see an endocrinologist sometimes and they'll say oh well you're obese so my recommendation is just lose weight even though your testosterone is low just lose weight is that this this doing? might help a little bit with testosterone levels by dropping your estrogens but it's not a treatment and a cure for hypogonadism of course and by losing weight it doesn't mean that we we lose muscle air, fat tissue the, the critical point is to preserve muscle tissue. This is done only with high protein, little weights, and enough testosterone levels. So the endocrinologist has no idea about the body composition. <laughs> you lose some muscle tissue as well. But, you know, <laughs> this is nothing to do with a healthy individual. So my, I think my, I, there's another one me and Mike were talking about the other day where um, there's a, there was a, a chap that, that is now on treatment and doing amazingly well, you know, lost nearly four stone, but he... He um he had insulin resistance, so I suppose that's another another cause, you know. Testosterone. This is the this is the cause of low testosterone, of course, you know. Yeah, um, and obviously, if you're trying to lose weight and um, improve maybe metabolic syndrome markers and things, having poor insulin sensitivity, as in how your body responds to it, it really hampers that situation. But this chap had seen an endocrinologist. Um, and he had levels of sort of six, you know, nanomoles, which is incredibly low. Um, and um, he 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 was told to just lose weight over and over and over. And he was he was doing everything right. So for years, you know, great diet, great exercise, really really putting in the in the effort. He didn't have high estrogen either, but he's still overweight. So yes, because there's no testosterone to aromatize. Yeah, literally nothing. But he you know he had a. And, and 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 he was still told even though he's been that same weight since he was sort of 16 years old you know and he was very muscular larger thick set guy he was told that he you know he had to lose weight um and that was the only way that he was going to in any way get to a point of trying anything um testosterone wise right and now now that he's normalized his testosterone and is is still continuing to do the same things HD, believe, uh, down, you know it's improved by the way, I looked before when I when I retired from bodybuilding and I waited a window of seven months in order to see if I could recover my testosterone was really, really low. I don't believe that you can be muscular with low testosterone. You can be big because of uh, excessive also uh, body fat, you know. So um, having a large BMI doesn't necessarily mean that you have high percentage of muscle. Uh, and I believe that the more you're going to stay hypogonadal, the more you're going to suffer in recovery, muscle gains. And actually, this is a catabolic process. So remaining hypogonadal will lead you to eating up your muscle and leading to skinny fat. Yeah, I mean, you see it in hospital when you get the... Uh, I used to see it a lot in my practice when you get somebody who is obese um, and maybe it then has a surgery and then they just waste internally they lose all their muscle mass but then you know if you, if you measured them their bmi would still be huge because they've got yeah, I mean, muscle is not converted to fat but it's the shrinkage of the muscle 
that will lead to lower metabol metabolic rate in case also you keep eating the same calories. Dropping the calories also is another point of lowering your BMR, you know? So exercise and frequent meals and enough protein will ensure that you keep your BMR high in order to keep your fat low, you know? So but certainly low T is not a cool scenario. In order to anabolize, you need hormone, you need resistance and you need food. So these are the three main. Uh, what do you think about the different biomarkers? Sometimes you see um, obese uh, men that may present with like um, HbA1c that's elevated, uh, potentially elevated hsCRP, and the linkage with low shbg. Now, elevated A1c is a result of visceral fat due to low T, okay, the insulin resistance. This will lead also to dyslipidemia, elevated LDL also, total cholesterol. Um, the other thing about shbg, as far as I know. SHBG is proportional to elevated estrogens. Okay, but elevated SHBG, of course, means low free testosterone. So, I mean, Sam, I think we, we've seen some patients um, who may sort off a bit more obese. Um, sometimes their journey um, is a little bit rocky at, at first, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, and um, there are these other factors to consider. So, uh, what are your thoughts uh, on, on metformin in obese patients along with TRT, George? Yeah, it's it's something obligatory. I also use metformin, and uh, it can help you to lower your cravings, your insulin resistance, because cravings is the result of insulin resistance. Glucose cannot enter the cells, and it keeps releasing insulin, and you keep staying hungry and fatigued and hypoglycemic, even though you eat. So food is not assimilated. Testosterone also can do the job, let's say, of metformin because it burns visceral fat and lowers insulin resistance. So metformin, testosterone, are molecular combination to improve or to reverse your diabetic two state, okay? And it helps you to lose fat, to lose uh, body weight and fat, of course. Uh, and I have to tell you that aging is related to elevated HBG. And my, my assumption is that AAS, elevated HBG has to do with waste. And wasting leads to elevated estrogens. So higher estrogens, higher SHBG, lower free testosterone. <clears throat> okay. So with um with those uh, obese mm -hmm. patients, I mean, first of all, there's that I did read a study recently where they have given men who have type two diabetes, they've given them testosterone treatment, even though their testosterone in their minds is actually reasonably good in the normal range. And they had improvements in insulin sensitivity, like you're saying, George. They had improvements in those things. Yeah. And I can see, I mean, in America, in certain places, testosterone and metformin are being used, even if you're not, you know, by the standards requiring, you know, TRT for for replacement. With they, they didn't have symptoms potentially, potentially of like you know the the low libido and those other things, but just giving the testosterone and giving them more than they had before was improving insulin resistance. I remember Chris I used to say that in the near future, assessing assessment of uh, a diabetic patient, I mean, uh, looking up to the diabetic patient type 2, we have to assess his HPDA profile because most likely diabetic patients are, are, are going to be hypogonadic. So taking testosterone will also improve the diabetic state, you know? Yeah, so it's something right. together. <laughs> so I think the when when uh, from a patient point of view me and mike like mike was alluding to earlier definitely noticed that um when somebody who is obese maybe and has years of insulin resistance all these sort of things when they start trt they're they they have some expectations of of what the general consensus is that you see on um, social media of like you know massively improved physique x y and z and all these other things and i think when you're in that state it can actually take much longer because of trying to improve even if you're doing all the right things obviously that needs to be key but improving insulin sensitivity having that knock-on effect to your metabolism visceral fat changes body weight changes blood flow and all those other things that, that that you get benefits from you almost have to go through this like transition of reversal to then get to the point of then getting the full benefits of somebody who may not be as obese i've definitely seen that pattern um so yeah, maybe this is where that metformin might be beneficial. Maybe that's where, you know, having the awareness of, of, of the effects of obesity on the body could sort of explain that and give people some reassurance that if they are 
I say, you know, obese, but overweight, insulin resistant, even, you know, it, TRT may take a bit longer to manifest the benefits. Would you say that's true? Well, as we age, we have to know that glycosylation of proteins occurs. So <clears throat> pancreas loses its ability to release insulin and insulin resistance develops as, as cachexia and muscle weakness also occur because the more, the more cachexia you have, the more visceral fat you have that leads to uh, insulin resistance. Um, and uh, it's more likely for a TRT patient in his mid 40s or mid 50s to take also metformin because people in this age generally develop insulin resistance. Okay. So, I mean, as a summary, um, we could uh, essentially, I think there's, there's not anything clear cut, but if you've got low testosterone, it seems you're going to have a higher chance of putting on weight, getting when I see obese people in the street, my. Yeah. My theory is that something goes wrong with the with the thyroid, which is the metabolic, you know, stimulator, and yeah. with the, with the testosterone in men at least, you know, and perhaps we have some Cushing syndrome, you know, excessive uh, of uh, cortisol and uh, adrenal hormones. So um, we have to fix either the testosterone or the thyroid, and sometimes it's both. Yeah. Hypothyroidism uh, is linked to hypogonadism, you know. So certainly it's a metabolic thing apart from overeating, you know, and not exercising. So sometimes people, we shouldn't blame people for being fat because something goes wrong with the hormones. <clears throat> I mean, I suppose you've got any cause of potential. You've got drug, other drug types, certain treatments, hormone issues that could cause obesity, which then might lead to... Yeah, but it's type two, of course, is the yeah. of good, poor lifestyle. Yeah, and then, but then you could have you know, you could be a person that's, or, you know, not experienced any of those things, has low testosterone for a certain reason, and then ends up becoming more obese because of it. So I think that's quite a good, do you think that's a good summary of sort of how those two things might link? And you can't look at it in a binary way of, you must have low testosterone because you're fat and that's your fault, basically, which is what we see. Could be, could be, could be. yes. Okay, so that was a discussion about low testosterone and obesity and how it links together. Um, if you like these videos, you know, please like, subscribe. You know, we've got other videos on the YouTube channel. We've got more coming. So uh, thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll be back soon.